Perfect. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to JBBC's virtual this zone. My name is Dania Benitra, host for this time slot, and this particular time slot is facilitated by the JBBC's technical services department, responsible for assisting clients with their product development needs from concept to market. And we do take that responsibility seriously, and that is why our virtual these zones have been embarking on potential product development opportunities for our participants that persons can utilize or explore as a business opportunity. And this week, we are expounding on what we started last week because we actually explored last week wall hangings, um, mm -hmm. just generally from the fashion perspective. But this week, we will be taking a closer look at wall hangings, but we will be focusing on batik on paper. And of course, there is nobody more prepared or more talented enough to handle this particular topic today than our resident cultural diplomat, Mr. Alo Lokman. And for persons who are not familiar with Alo, I will read his um, CV so that you can get a taste of um, his expertise and also how um, talented he is um, to actually be the lead on this webinar today. So Mr. Alou Lokman Omotayo is a Nigerian artist and volunteer slash cultural diplomat to Jamaica. He holds a bachelor degree in painting from the University of Lagos and a Master of Fine Arts Printmaking from the University of Benin. He's currently pursuing his PhD from the same university. He was awarded Student with Leadership Qualities in 2008 at the University of Lagos Endowment Scholarship and Awards Partner Forum, and two times first Best Faculty of Arts Researcher at the University of Lagos Annual Research Conference and Fair in 2016 and 2018. 2017, sorry. He has acted as curator for the University of Benin Second Eminent Lecture Series, Culture at Risk in honor of Nobel Laureate, Professor Wally Soyinka, 2016. And he has done numerous commission works and participated in several solo and group exhibitions. He's a member of the Society of Nigerian Artists and a member of the Arts Council of the African Studies Association. He has worked with the Tourism Product Development Company and the Ministry of Tourism in Jamaica in 2017 and 2018. He has also worked with the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Gender Entertainment and Sports in 2019. And currently he's with the Jamaica Business Development Corporation under the Ministry of Industry and Commerce to add to its credit, he's a multi-talented artist who has facilitated numerous workshops through JBDC, which includes, but definitely is not limited to, jewelry slash bead making, leather chasing and repose, and so much more. Mm -hmm. And if you have been following our series of JBDC virtual biz zones, the one o'clock time slots since the start of the year, he actually facilitated numerous sessions for us looking at different topics such as um, jewelry made from African print as well as leather jewelry and so much more and if you miss those you can check them out on our YouTube channel JBDC Jamaica. So without any further ado I'm going to turn things over to Alo so that he can lead the way in what promises to be a very exciting um, product opportunity because I've actually seen some of the pieces he has made and they are actually really beautiful. So, hello, please go ahead. Over to you. Yeah. Um, good afternoon once again. I'm uh, Dana Barnett. Um, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Yeah, um, today's section that we'll be working on the what we call batik on paper. We'll be working on batik on paper. Uh, batik on paper is a kind of artwork that um, uses wax and color. So, and uh, in this um, method, 
you can use any kind of color, but um, or I mean, any kind of medium of color as far as is water based. And uh, you can use a um, poster color. And also you can use any of the dye that is um, water based, but it doesn't uh, need any uh, chemical component for you to fix it on the paper. It's just a simple technique uh, that goes with the coloring and also waxing. Now, I'll be showing you some of the materials you need for batik on paper. Yeah, I'll be showing you some of the um, material you be uh, that you need for batik on paper. For example, you have your paper, white paper. You can see the white paper, I cut it into size. And uh, I have another one here that I cut into sizes. Oh, and also you need um you need your brush you have your brushes on uh, different sizes of the brush and also you need a small bowl different uh, small bowls in which you can mix your color on it and also you need water and then i have here beside me here i have a frame which once I've finished and then I do the final framing for you to see how the work comes out. And uh, here again, I have the hand towel so that I'll, I'll be needing hand towel to clean my hand and, uh, and also clean my brush on a regular basis. And another thing again, you need is um, then I have dye. I have a dye here. Now, as, as I said earlier on, you, uh, I'm using the dye because it is water-based, so I don't need anything to fix it. And at the same time, you can use poster color. Poster color is still water-based, or you can use any of the dye that, that that's what I mean, any of the dye, or not, uh, any of the local dye that you can get here in Jamaica. And um, another thing you need is a newsprint. That is old newspapers. These are old newspapers. And the newspaper is going to, uh, the purpose of the newspaper is to remove the wax from the, from the paper, uh, from, the, um, from your work. And also, you need a pressing iron. Then I have a pressing iron beside me here. You can see the pressing iron. So once you get to that stage, which I'll be using the pressing iron at the newsprint, then the, you'll be, and then you will see what or how I'm going to go about it. And also here, then the, I have my wax melted here. You can see my wax is melted, it's very hot. It's hot, you can see that. And fine, you can use the paraffin wax or you use a candle, your candle wax, just make sure that uh, you melt it. And uh, once you melt it, so uh, let it be about um, 270 degrees centigrade and then make sure that you don't bring it up flames. So, and when you make your wax, um, once it's above 270 to 300 degrees centigrade, turn down or turn off the, um, your stove. So, and uh, also I would like to show you some of the works that uh, we've done, which is uh, batik on paper. That's here now. Yeah, yes. Okay, yes, you can bring it here. Now, these are some of the works which we have here. Let me quickly show you. Now you can have a look the way I separate the colors and have the green, the blue, the white. Each one of them, they, uh, they, the places where you see the green, was first painted with green, and uh, the place you see the blue was painted with blue. And then the, and the, the next thing I do, I do the waxing. After I do the waxing, then I do, um, then, and then, and also, and I apply my last color. It is, yeah, it's, it is a similar process where you, um, you do your um, batik on your cloth. But this one is a very simple method, which you don't need any 
chemical components for you to mix with the dye. Then you can see the same thing here. I make some uh, drawing of images. You can make drawing of images of the same thing. And then here again, I have another one here again. If you can see this one too. But this one, I use stamp. I use sponge. Then I carve off my sponge. And then and I first of all, wax on the paper, why the paper is white. And then the next thing, and apply the yellow. And then I let it dry. And each time you're working, you have to make sure that uh, uh, you allow it to dry. And what I do is that I just put it inside the sun within like um, 10 minutes or five minutes there about, it's dry. And then I bring it back inside and I, I, and I apply another color. Now for this one now, the first thing I did, and I did my stamp, I put my stamp on the, on the white piece. That is why you can see some white here. See some white here. After I did that, then the next thing I did, I allowed it to dry. Then, um, sorry, the next thing I did, I painted it yellow. After the yellow, I allowed it to dry. Then I stamp on the yellow. Then which means that it, on, on, which means on the each of the stamping, the wax block the places that you don't want your color to penetrate. Then after that, the next thing I did, and then I painted it um, red. And I allow it to dry again, then I stamp. After the stamping, then that is my final color. You can see the final color, which is a uh, uh, chocolate, dark chocolate. So the same process I'd apply here. The process that I apply here, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite simple. The first thing I did, I just paint the, the white, um, the white paper. And after I paint the white paper, I allow it to dry and then I stamp it. Then I put the last color, which is, uh, which is the black. So I'm going to do the demonstration now. And for you to see, at least you can see the finished work. Once it finished, then you, and then you can do your framing. And then that is all. And then you sign your work and you have it, um, your wall hanging. So I'm gonna go back now and, and for you to see the process on how it is done. And this is my melted wax. You can see the melted wax. And uh, then the next thing I'm gonna do now, I go back to my seats now so that then I start, then I start the process. Now, um, you need to charge water for this one. You still got to stay there. Oh, Lord, what do you want to press? Alice, stop. Oh, God, this is general. Okay. Hello, we're seeing you yeah. fine, you know. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Okay. So now I've shown you the die here now. I'm going to start the, the demonstration now. Then I take some of the die here. I have the raspberry. I have the lemon yellow. Then I put it inside my container. This is the yellow. I don't need too much of dye, just a little quantity. And you can see how little it is. I put a little quantity inside the container. Then the, the next thing again, I take other color. <laughs> then I have my um, bright green. the bright green here. 
can see the bright gate is almost close to the to the yellow. But then I'm still going to do some mixing so that I have a darker green. Then the, the next thing here now, what I do here now, I take the Robinson egg, which is a very light blue. The same thing, I put a little quantity. Now here now, I have my, um, I have my turquoise blue. Oh, I love turquoise blue. Blue, one of my favorites. I have my turquoise blue here. Yes, now, as I said that I would like to get some, uh, some green, darker shade of green. I put my turquoise blue, a little turquoise blue, very little one. And uh, then I use my bright green. I put a little bright green there and it's gonna give me shade of uh, a darker shade of green. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to get some water. I have my water here. Wow. And I have my water here. You can see the green. And if you can see, give me the darker green. Wow. So here I have my yellow. It's turning like green. <laughs> the yellow too is turning like green. <laughs> okay. I have this one. Why is everything looking like green? <clears throat> everything looking like green in the picture, see? Then I have my blue. Everything reacting. You can see the blue here. I think I need my raspberry, okay? I have my lime pop. Oh, I still the line for kind of light blue. But uh, I think already I have the blue here. I, I don't really, uh, let me use this container to mix with raspberry. And we've got raspberry here. Clean up this. Kind of light green, you can see light green. I'll mix that with water for me to get my light. Then I have my, and also here I have a Chinese red. And uh, let me use this one as my. Raspberry. You know how it here, raspberry. You can see the raspberry. Then the, the next one here, let me use this container to, yeah, I'm gonna need more cup. But uh, let me use this up for my Chinese red. Chinese red. Chinese red is a very bright red. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. As I said earlier on, all what you need is a very, very little quantity of um, of the dye. And also, I said earlier on, uh, 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 and I said again that you can use, it's not compulsory you use this kind of dye. Any local dye you see, you can make use of it, or even though you can make use of poster color, poster color or water color as your color that you're going to use for the uh, for the particular paper. Now, the next stage, what I'm going to do now, first of all, I do a very simple design, very simple design by, by applying, I'm gonna apply the color on the paper first, then allow it to dry. Once it dry, then, the, then I come back to it. Then I have my paper here. What I do now is uh, take uh, this. Make sure you always rinse the brush so that you don't put the same color inside another one. See that? Clean out the brush. Then I take my Chinese red. Then the next thing I do here, I put my blue. The next thing here, okay, let me use my, my purple. Now, you can see what I just did now. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull this one inside the sun for it to dry. And while this one is drying, then I will be doing another uh, type again. Thank you. So please, and you can put this one outside inside the sun. I think within, and then once you put it inside the sun within, uh, within five minutes, See, and I left some stone outside, just put it on me. So within five minutes, it's dry. And then the, in fact, before I wouldn't finish up with the, uh, with the next one, then the, that one, but I'll dry. And also here, and then I have my carved sponge, you know, I carve it in a, a kind of pencil way. And also you can use a brush. You can see the brush, the brush I'm gonna use. Then uh, another thing, another thing again that uh, you will need as a beginner, you might need your pencil, pencil for you to draw. So, so you can use your pencil to draw what you want, and uh, um, or you use a marker to draw because. Um, Or you use a marker to draw to get the outline, and also now this is what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to make a random of a little drawing, and for you to see. Then this is what I'll do. Make sure your line is faint. So that once you wax, I love this kind of drawing. It's 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 it always appearing on any of my works. Now you can see how simple I made the drawing. 
So what I'll do now, I use my sponge, put it inside the wax. Make sure it melts. Then I go over it. You can see that. Again, what I do now, I just go over the line. Just try as much as possible for you to have a steady hand. Take your wax again. Then go over it. Now, on this segment now, so I don't really need the wax to dry, or, 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 or I don't need it to. I don't need to put the the wax inside the soil. This is ready to paint at this stage. So, but um, before I go on with the paint, I will quickly uh, mark another one again. Then this time around, I'm not going to draw with the pencil, and I'm going to draw with my marker. I just draw over and over each of the drawings. So the next thing I'll do here, fine, you can use your brush if you want. You can use your brush if you want to. Uh, but I, and for me, I always prefer to use the sponge because the sponge absorb the wax and then I'll have excess of the uh, wax and for, for it to go around instead of touching on several occasions. So, oh, you can leave it. Just, yes, yes, you can leave it. Then uh, I pick my wax, I run over the black.
So I'm running my wax through around the black. The purpose of the wax is to block each of the color from going into each other. Now, now see, this is a um, black and also it has been outlined with um, with wax, and also this is a this is a pencil one. Okay, I think uh, the light is kind of like sharing. Okay, anyway, by the time I paint it up, then you see how each one of them will come differently. Now, what I'll do now first, then I have my yellow here. Yeah. The wax will enable me to paint each of them without running into each other. Now I put my first color. Let me show you. You can see. Now I put my first color on it. Uh, the wax didn't allow. It didn't allow the um, the color to run out of its border. Then the next thing now. I use my Chinese red. Red color. I don't use my brush flat, I run through it. And uh, I use blue and the blue color right beside me. Sometimes if the if the color touches each and uh, go into each other, don't bother with us. It's still giving you or it's still gonna give you a wonderful outcome. And uh, I use my, um, let me use my green now. Green, okay. Now you can see what I have here now. So the next thing I'm gonna do again, I leave this inside the sun for it to dry before I can apply any other color or before I can apply wax. So as it is now, any place, once it dry, any place I apply the wax, the face is gonna remain the same color that is on it. Now, while we are waiting, the other one is dry. This is the first one I did, you can see it's dry. So this one now is gonna be a finished work now. Now, before I continue with this one now, to save time, that's why I'm doing them multiple so that they won't be waiting for one to dry before we start 
Then by time I, by time I finish up with this one, the other one is dry. You can see this is dry. And then the next thing I'm going to do now is to strategize my design. I do as much as intricate uh, freehand design in the wax. Then uh, you won't really see the design now until I apply the next color. So then the You can use brush instead of sponge. You know, you're okay with the brush. But for me, I'm kind of okay with the sponge. Just carve your sponge like a pencil. And then, yeah, and then you are good to go. Now, I finished my waxing. Now, you can't really see it now until I apply the dark color. Now, at this stage now, this is the final stage. The next thing I'm going to do now is to apply a, a darker shade of color that can overshadow all, all this work. Then you will be able to see the beauty. I make sure, as I said, rinse, make sure that you rinse your brush well. Ali, get me one cup there. Cup. So what I'll do now, for me to get a darker shade of color, then I mix two colors together. Yeah, I, I put the, the turquoise blue. 
with a raspberry. As is, if you if you don't have um, black, so and I put a little Chinese bread. Then the you give me a darker shade of color. And look, what I'm going to get here is this. You can see that, that is the final color. Now the next thing now, I'm gonna allow this to dry. Then um, once it dry, then we use the iron and the new sprint to remove the wax. But uh, before I do that, uh, let me make sure that I do all, all other ones. And then that will be the final thing we're gonna do. And the next thing that I put inside the frame for you to see. So you can put this one outside for me to dry, please. Thank you. Then I go on with the next one. Yeah, you can bring the other one, and that one should be dry by now. Now, with this one now, okay, I need to clean my table so that it will spin. And also, uh, I'm gonna quickly do something of this nature that I have here. Something of this nature I have here, because I still have a little more time, but I will prime this one. I prime this one. Okay, thank you. Then I prime this one. So the next thing I will do now, now you can see, why I was finishing the other one, this one is dry. That was the one I was doing the yellow one. But let me let me continue with this one because it's dry. So let me just uh, now what I'll do now is um some of the places I want it to remain their main color, I'll block it with wax. Once we block it with wax, so um, it's gonna uh, resist any color to go into it. Now what I'll do now, some places I won't block it totally. I just make some design on it, on them while some places I block it for, it for me to be able to achieve a wonderful design. So block, block my triangle. So what I'm doing now to make sure that uh, if 
have some places blocked. No. Yes. I'll show you the art cup now. But then mostly when you're working with it, you won't really see the outcome yet until you put the final color, which is uh, and then always the final color is always the darker shade of the color, which which I'm going to put now. Now you can see this place now. I've used my wax to block some places so that uh, the the final color won't penetrate into that. So what I'll do now. Is to apply my final color on it. Wow. Now you see that. Now you can see all the places that I've used the wax on them, the, uh, the darker color didn't, and it resists the darker color getting into them. Now, what I do now, again, is I put this one inside the sun for it to dry. And as, as also, as I told you, the finishing one is going to be when I do I do the ironing, remove the I remove the wax with the new sprint and iron. The, the pot is one again in the sun. And I believe that one is dry because as you, uh, as you're finishing one, the, uh, the the other one is getting dried already. So. Now, I'll be doing the last one. I'll be doing the last one now. And then, the, then after that, this one now, I'll start the, the waxing and also the framing, how you see the end of the work. So what I'll do now, as I told you earlier on, I want to do something similar to the one I have on the board. So I have my square drawn. Then what I'll do now, I'll apply the color randomly.
make sure when you're rinsing, rinse it very well. Have your hand to well. And uh, have this one now. I put my Chinese red. Do my Chinese red now. You can allow your color to run each into each order. Okay, let's down. Once the sun, it dry very fast. Raspberry here. I think I have green, let me use green. And um, let me use, uh, use my Color again. Yeah, I can see apply the green this side. And compete it with the Chinese red. Now see what I did here now. See that. So the next thing, I'm gonna allow it to dry. Once it dry, then apply, then I will apply my wax on it. While it's drying, I have one. This is ready. This one is ready to, to de-wax. So uh, the, the, this is the waxing, you don't need uh, to put it inside hot water or anything. All what you need to do, you just iron it and then you get your design out or you get your wax out of your design. Now, what, what we'll be doing now, while we're, while we're waiting for the other one to do, I mean, while, while we're waiting for the other one to dry, I will quickly, I will quickly um, do the sample, how to do the de-waxing or how to remove the wax from it. So to we'll save time, then that's what I'm gonna do now. Because we have two pieces that is ready now for us to remove the wax. So what I'll do now is to plug the iron. And I'm going to plug the iron now. So plug the iron. 
Actually, I don't want to plug the iron down because it will get into the part of the Turn the iron to the highest. So you don't need you don't need it to steam it. So the next thing now I do is now I get my knee springs. Now what you do is you lay some new springs underneath. And also you use, you can see the other one to this dry. Make sure you have enough newspaper. You have enough newspaper. Our iron is hot now. Wow. Then, yeah. Then you take one. What I'll do now, see what uh, what I'm going to do now. I put it and I put the newsprint as as it, I mean the newspaper on it. Then I do my iron. And you can see the newspaper soak with the this newspaper with immediately soak the um the wax out of the work. So you do that as much as possible that there is no more, you are not feeling any wax in your work anymore. So now you can throw this one, then you can throw it into the beans for you to use, do another one. You can see now, now I'll remove my wax on it. The good thing about this kind of work, The good thing about this kind of work is the finish was still will look like exactly like um, exactly like batik that we see on clocks. It will give you exactly the effect of batik on clocks. You see, the wax is done. So the new skin soak up the wax immediately. Now we have two works ready now. You can see that now. Now, what I'll do here now, why that one is drying, before it dries finish, and what I'll do is to do the framing because we still have, we don't have much time. I have my frames here. You can as well uh, get um, a bigger frame. Get a bigger frame, or uh, which means that if you're working on the big work, so you can get the big frame on it. So I have my glass here, which is going to go inside the frame right away. Right away. Then I put my work. I put my glass first, put the glass first. And put the work inside. Then I do this. Close it. And I have my work. See that? can go any which way. You can see that. And the same thing here, I have for the second one too. I'm prepared, you know. I've got in my frame. Then I do the same thing. Now this one has now have up and down. Watch out for the up and the down, then then the put my 
then a lucky pull. Now, I have two work ready. You can see that now. So, so we have the finished work already, but uh, before I land up for this one now, let me quickly do the last one and then we, and then I can uh, start to uh, attend to questions and answer. So let me do that one now and uh, I write into, if you can see this one is dry. Now the next thing is just for me to apply my wax and put the last color on it. Then boom, I'm done. So I put the iron away from my hand so that I won't burn myself. So uh, then I go on with this now. So on, on, on this, in each of the square, I will put different design or different motifs on them. But take on paper, I make my design bold. Just make your design randomly, lines, shapes, circle. This is what I'm doing here. Now what I'm doing, as I said, applying wax, all the places that I apply the wax is gonna resist the color. 
basically that is the process of the wax. The wax resists the color. And make sure that your wax is not too hot. Leave your wax at a temperature of 270 degrees centigrade. Does a free hand. Free hand, but take on paper. Yes, this is wonderful. Most of the time, once you're walking like this, before you can see the beauty of what you're doing, is when you apply the last color, which is the dark color, then you see your design will pop out immediately. After I'm done with this one, I'm going to give room for question. As I said, why this one is getting dry. Then done. So this is done now. Turn my wax off. Then the next thing I do now, you can see I've applied my wax on it. Fine, you can't really see it that until when I apply the darker color, then the, you will see the beauty of the work. And which I'm going to do now. Just paint over it. Just paint over it.
Now, this is the final one. Now check what comes out of it. Wow. So at this stage now, yeah, this is the final one. So I will be saying, the, I would like to stop at this stage now for me to be able to um, admit some questions that any of our participants or our viewer were to ask any questions. And um, thank you very much for watching and also participating on the online workshop. Thank you very much. Yeah, let me quickly um, answer some questions. All right, hello. Thank you very, very much. I heard you said wow a while ago when you when you completed that um last piece, but throughout your entire presentation, I kept on saying wow, absolutely magnificent. Um, the pieces are just really beautiful. And for those of you who may be wondering, um, why is it that we have been focusing on wall hangings. Part of what we're trying to, to bring to your attention is there's an opportunity because of the focus now with just utilizing a small space. We have to be utilizing webcams, we have to be utilizing our computers, our laptops, or even our phones to facilitate training or different meetings or so forth now. So your background will become very important. And therefore, Having beautiful pieces like these in your background can definitely add to your space and um, not only assist in making you feel a lot better, but allow the persons who may be joining you in your prospective meeting to enjoy a beautiful piece of work while they're engaging maybe mundane activities. So hello, thank you very much. Um, it was really interesting seeing these pieces come to life. Okay, I saw where Lisa had actually asked earlier about where she could get the frames. I don't know if you want to tell us exactly where you got those frames. Somebody answered her, but your particular frames that you utilized, where did you get those frames? Yeah, actually, I got this frame from Bashko. Oh, from Bashko, okay. So we can use it, they're pretty accessible. And, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm seeing where Susan Broadbar had responded and said that stationery stores, pharmacies, Chinese shops, anywhere um, you'd be able to access. If you have any more questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat. Hello, I did have a question for you as it relates to the paper. Can it just be done on any old paper? Like it doesn't matter or does it have to be a particular type of paper? Uh, you can use uh... Uh, that is a uh, cartridge paper or normal um, um, cardboard, the white cardboard. And then also you can use any other color of the cardboard, whether yellow or green. But then once you're using the, um, a colored cardboard, which means that um, uh, you just apply the darker shade of your, of your color, which means that uh, you'll be getting just two colors. For example, Alicia, can you, can you bring that brand one on the table right there? Yes, yeah, bring it. Yeah, yeah, for example, we can see this one now. Mm -hmm. I use brown paper. It's not white paper. I use brown paper and then I get my design on it. Then I just paint one color on it. That is why you have, yeah, you, I just have two shades of color. Okay. So what is that? Yeah, for example, if you're using green, then you put your wax in the places that uh, you want your green to remain and just, just put the last color on it. And then also if you're using yellow, because yellow is kind of light color, that is yellow cardboard or yellow paper. Now you can manipulate a bit, you can get like two colors from that because it's light. Now, how you're gonna get the two colors is this. 
when you apply the first color, for example, and I have my background is yellow, and then the, after I use my wax on it, then I put maybe red. So there's the tendency of applying another darker color on the red. So I put the wax on the yellow, allow it to dry, then I wax and then uh, uh, I paint it red, allow it to dry, I wax the red part then, and I paint on the red part using a stronger color, a darker color that can overshadow the, the red, then automatically you will to get three color design. Wow, wow, some really awesome techniques. So hello, the paper that you utilized today was actually white cartridge paper? Yes, white cartridge paper. And oh. also you can and also you can make use of brown paper. Right. So you can yes. utilize different colors just as yes, long as you um yes. recognize what is necessary to help to highlight whatever yes. design it is that you want to bring up on the actual um background. Yes, that's correct. I'm seeing so where some of the techniques it's pretty similar to fabric batik but it's a lot quicker a lot more simple than um fabric batik because of course in terms of the waxing you would have had to do a lot more washing out in terms of you know even having hot water or so forth can this technique be applied outside of general fabric and and perhaps the cartridge paper can this technique be applied on other surfaces just in case somebody may want to explore another potential product opportunity outside of perhaps just general fabric and paper is it easy to perhaps try it on another surface if you mean surface what kind of surface is it well, fabric it depends. Or paper? What about even a wooden surface, perhaps, or no. any other surface? No, no, you, you can't work on wooden surface. It has to be, um, and if you want to do batik, yeah, the regular batik and, you know, uh, on cloth, just like the same thing I'm wearing. Like what I'm wearing here is batik, mm -hmm. you know? And if you, and if, and if you look at this design, see? kind of similar design with what I'm wearing. This is batik on cloth. Now, as, as I said earlier on, the difference between the, when you're using cloth, when you're using cloth, most of the dye, the rat is if you're using, um, if you're using cloth, it has to go with the dye and go with the chemical component that will fix the dye into the cloth. Now, um, if you're using paper, then you don't need any um, chemical component that will fix the dye into the paper. And also, I said earlier on, you can use poster color or watercolor. But because um, the dye is what is available here for me, that is why I make use of the dye. OK. But, uh, you can't do it on the, on the wood surface or um, any hard surface, no. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for that. Hello. I'm seeing where Susan Broadbury is asking, is the sponge special or can I use regular sponge? Yeah, you can use a regular sponge. It's it's it is a regular sponge. Just have it. Have it in a pencil, like you know, and it has a pointed this is that when you pick your wax, soak it and then go around it. And also you can use a brush. Also, hello, can you just give us some information on the wax that you actually utilized in your presentation? Is it just normal candle wax or is it just what type of wax did you actually utilize? Yeah, candle wax. You can use a candle wax or the, yeah, the, 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 the candle wax is still the paraffin wax. And then, but then, you know, it come in different form and we have it in the block before it's turned into candle. So, but if, it's, if you have your candle, you can melt your candle and then you still get the same results. And this will be the white candle, not just any colored candle or any candle can be utilized? Any candle can be utilized. Okay. 
All right, but the general wax that is utilized for this te technique is actually paraffin wax. Yes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, just in case you want to explore on your own, if, if you don't have a candle there that you can utilize, you can actually try to source paraffin wax to do your batik technique. Okay, I'm seeing where Lisa Calendar is actually asking Alo, how do you maintain the wax at a stable temperature, 270 degrees Celsius, um, for instance? How do you maintain it that way? Yeah, um, because I've been working with wax for quite a long time, doing batik, that is a uh, cloth. And um, one thing again is that so um, the they have a thermometer which you can use to uh once you put it inside the wax and what is getting higher as in what, what i mean what once it's getting above 270 to 300 degrees centigrade you and the thermometer will show you that it's getting higher so you need to cool it down but um because I've been using it, so I already have used my eye to gauge. So, and how I gauge it is this. Once I melt my wax and then it melted, and, and is, you can see the wax is bringing out, you can see some flame coming out from the wax. Then it shows to me that it's getting too high. So what I do is I, I turn off the stove or I turn down the stove. And once, and once I discovered that the flame on it is too much, I take off the wax totally. Then I take off the pot totally from the stove. Then I put it outside for it to calm down. Once it calm down, and then I bring it down, then I turn my stove in a low temperature. Then with that one, it will maintain that low and then you discover that throughout what you're doing, you're not seeing any flame coming out on it, but it should just maintain that low temperature which you can work with. So with that low temperature, then it, it is at the minimum of that 270 to 300 degree. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions for Alo? And of course, you can utilize whatever design that comes to mind um, once you're embarking on the batik. Yes. Batik. Well, I must say it was really intriguing to see. Okay, I'm seeing Susan Broadbur. She's asking if the wax is higher than 300 degrees, is it that it cannot be used or do you have to wait until it gets cooler? Yeah, um, one thing again, I will tell you when you're with, once you're using your wax, you need to mentor it very well. And um, if you come across an accident where the wax catches fire, because once it go beyond that 300 and it's going to 350, 370, so 400, the next thing cuts flat. Then it's going to catch fire. The up, the wax will catch fire. So once and once it catches fire, don't be afraid. All what you need to do, take any um, cover, just cover it and take it out. But once uh, once you cover it, you quench the light immediately, and then um, take it out and for it to come down. And again, once and then just make sure that you watch and it doesn't go beyond that. And how you're going to know is this. Once it's getting too hot, as I said earlier on, you, you, you'll be seeing flame coming out. And at that stage, hmm, you must allow it to calm down before you started using it. If you use it at that stage, you won't get a defined or uh, you won't get a proper design as you want. Once you use it at that stage, once you 
pick your wax and you put it on the paper, you discover that it, it will just spread. It will spread on its own without, instead of it to, to stay on the draw line that you made, it will spread. So which means that it's too hot. Mm. Those are the sign you will know that the, uh, the wax is too hot. Okay, so once it isn't staying within a particular design you want, if it's just spreading, once you put it on either the fabric or the paper, we'll know that mm. it needs to cool down a little bit. So you just need yes. to give it some time then for it to yes. get a little cool. Yes. So how do you how do you test it after that? Just know it's cool enough so it doesn't get too cold. But yeah, um, just right. Yes. How and how you know that um, it's too cold is once you apply, once you apply your um, once you apply it, you discover that um, the the wax is not penetrating. It's not penetrating inside your paper. It does stay on top and it will be giving a white effect of candy. So all you need to do is just make sure that uh, you turn it back. And, uh, and, and then again, one thing again you could do if you don't have the thermometer for you to be able to um, check or check the temperature. And then once it's on the lower temperature, once, once you're stuck and once you allow the flame to go off and then um, you put it on the low temperature and find you, you'll be seeing some little, little flame coming out, out of it. Very little, very little, which means that it's very okay for you to work with at that stage. Okay. All right, um, I'm just throwing it out there just in case you have any last minute questions. I'm going to ask you one more question, Alo, just for perhaps our viewers who may have any um, queries, who may not, as in they may be viewing this later on. How, what, what can you tell us a little bit about this technique that you're utilizing the newspaper to assist in the wax in the paper that um, we actually applied the batik process, the newspaper and the, the iron. Yeah, um, if I could hear you well, and then uh, what is the purpose of the newspaper, right? Yes, and the iron, I mean, how yes. does that work? Okay. Exactly? Now, the, the, the purpose of the newspaper and the ironing is that, um, once you put your newspaper underneath and put another one on it, and you put the, the hot iron in it, and then it dissolves the wax immediately while the newspaper soak up the wax from the work. That is the um, purpose of the newspaper. The newspaper soak up the wax, or I mean soak up, remove the wax from the, from the work with the hot iron. And what is the best temperature to maintain for that? Uh, for the iron? Yeah, it is a maximum. Yeah, maximum. The maximum? Yeah, because yeah, it's maximum here, which is a high, which is a high, uh, this is temperature, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not going to burn up the wall. It won't okay. One of the work, yes. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions right now, Alo. So I think everybody is good with what you presented or is pretty comfortable in perhaps trying it on their own. And that is really beautiful. Really beautiful work. Um, we really appreciate your presentation as well as all the techniques that you take the time to really show us mm -hmm. each week we really are grateful for for that and i'm sure we will be seeing some of these pieces not perhaps maybe not the same designs but i'm sure people will be able to utilize this to just explore potential opportunities 
for their respective products. So thank you very much, Alo. Um, another exemplary week um, of you giving us your exceptional techniques and information. So thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, next week we will be wrapping up the wall hanging series. We will be looking at wall hangings boho on conventional wood and wool. So that should also be very interesting. And I know we won't want to miss that as well because we will be exploring um, utilizing other um, raw materials and coming up with some really creative pieces at the end of the session. So I know you won't want to miss that as well. So please tune in next week um, at the same time. Hello, do you have any last words that you would want to hear or give to our participants? Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much and for watching and learning uh, how to do the batik on paper. I really appreciate. And then, um, yeah, you can do that on your own. And you can do any design on your own, depending on what you want. And then I also use it as your wall hanging. And the, you know, and also it could serve as a source of means. Imagine you have quite a number of them of different designs. And uh, yeah, you make something out of it. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. And I'm even seeing perhaps these designs can be utilized on cards or even mm -hmm. other yeah book covers mm -hmm. or so forth down the road there are, mm -hmm. there are multiple well there are multiple areas that can be explored and we do encourage persons to utilize their creativity in terms mm -hmm. of getting these techniques and making your own product out of it it doesn't have to be wall hangings that was the focus for today but think about how you can utilize this technique in terms of making other products and um, that we can get out there. So thank you very much for your time today and thank you for sticking with us. We, oh, please remember that you can check out this webinar and previous webinars on our YouTube page, JBDC Jamaica. And if you need additional information on the JBDC, you can check out any one of our social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, or you can check out our website as well. Or you can give us a call at 876-928-516125. That's 876-928-516125. Or you can contact the Incubator and Resource Center at 876-758-39668. So that's 876-758-39668. So there are multiple areas that the JBDC can assist individuals with in terms of developing or maintaining or starting their respective businesses. So we look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to you joining us next week. So in the meantime, please be safe and take care of yourselves. And until next week, have a wonderful day or evening. So hello, goodbye. Thank you, bye.